page number 221 continued the president of the all india trade union council was persuaded by sauda muzaffar and jackson to make representations to the sir george white mills on behalf of ratan an application was sent asking for his reinstatement and he was asked to call to see the manager personally the lesser, the letter arrived with hundreds of other communications concerning bales of raw cotton received in the railway godowns orders for the dispatch of finished cloth machinery imported from england repairs to be undertaken enquiries about prices and samples and most important of all sir george white's dispatches the manager mr little was flooded in his rush to tackle the correspondence he did not know where to begin he caught sight of the dear sir on one letter the honored sir on another and as regards the 100 bales of cotton that were not delivered on another the thanking you in anticipation on still another and he was exhausted his gaze fluttering wildly from difficult sprawl of the railway goods clerk in dim carbon tracing on pink paper the crude edges of jamshed ji jijiboy's mills dispatches and the immaculate sheets of sir regilin white's crested letter paper mr little was impatient by nature the humid heat of bombay which always covered his face with sweat had not improved his nerves he glanced at the uh, at the electric fan over his head he shifted his chair he shuffled papers his throat felt parched he wished he could get up to pour himself out a stiff whisky but duty called end of page number 221 now page 222 but duty called duty stern voice of the daughter of daughter of god and wordsworth suffered from the effects of the heat he bent down on the table to the table stretching for the trays into which he had roughly sorted the letters he knew he must attend to sir reginald reginald's orders first q wala he called a young indian clerk came in dressed in a white cotton english suit and a boat like black cap the new national headgear with which he hoped to balance up the prestige of his motherland against his predilection for the european desk his dark face was full of fear because he had never felt quite at ease with white men ever since one had kicked him in the corner of hornby road for no other crime than the childish curiosity which had made him stare with wonder and admiration at the sahib he stood tense and still for heaven's sake sit down you give me the creeps standing there like that shouted mr little yes sir the clerk mumbled his underlip quivering his brown eyes full of fear and shame take this down ordered mr little in an even voice the let, the clerk thought that the sahib had recovered somewhat and seated himself on an iron chair at the edge of the large desk the cool drafts of air from the fan soothed the heat of his body he lowered his eyes to the shorthand notebook to avoid staring at the sahib and to and to be in readiness to take down the letter wake up shouted mr little suddenly sending a wild wave of fear through the clerk's body so that he drew back instinctively as if he were being hit wake up the sahib repeated modulating his tone to evenness as he saw that he had frightened the clerk almost out of his wits begin he note uh, he continued notice at top spelling n o t i c e at this moment a fly settled on mr little's nose he tried to brush it off it came back as soon as he opened his mouth to speak lal kaka he shouted huzur came the obedient voice and followed it from behind the cane chick which discreetly screened the office from the gaze of the world appeared the parsi messenger boy in shirt in a shirt and shorts his profusely oiled hair parted in the middle and giving him a dignity which looked ridiculous in the child take this uh, take this fly killer and strike it on the fly when it settles anywhere in the room 
end of page 222 now page 223 yes huzur said lal kaka and lifted the cane with the heart shaped leather flap attached to it screw wala said sahib right the clerk applied pencil to paper in view of the protest the present trade depression and currency crisis mr little dictated in a slow deliberate manner screwing up his eyes and puffing out his cheeks till the words began to twist and roll like windy ret- uh, rhetoric the board of directors regrets to announce that in order to keep the plant running and to curtail expenses the mills will go on short time immediately there will be no work for the fourth week in every month till a further notice no wages will be paid for that week but the management having the welfare of the workers at a heart have sanctioned a substantial allowance this change will take effect from may the 10th signed dr reginald white bart president sir george, uh, bart sir uh, president sir george white mills mr little was about to listen to the clerk's usual recitation of what he had taken down when the fly settled on his forehead he looked frowningly at lal kaka lal kaka struck the flap of the fly killer on sahib's forehead the sahib's frown ha- having resolved his doubt about the advisability of killing the fly you damn fool you bloody little fool fumed mr little as he rose wildly from his chair rubbing his forehead with his right hand and gesticulating importantly with the left he would have kicked the boy out of the room but the telephone bell rang rang the sudden jarring refrains of its mechanical steel song hello hello said mr little snatching the receiver from the clerk's hand sir george white mills he confirmed his face purple with rage and scarlet when the flap where the flap of the fly killer, uh, killer had struck it yes oh yes sir reginald of course of course i have just dictated the notice i will call jimmy and hand it over to him yes yes of course you will what time may we expect you before lunch right sir reginald good morning sir reginald good morning yes not too bad you know hot stifling but the orders are coming through we shall expect you immediately good morning go and call the foreman sahib you swine he said turning to lal kaka who stood near the door paralyzed with fright end of page number 223 now page 224 lal kaka ran out but came back huzur the sahib is coming hello jimmy good morning the mill is going on short work from next week god am all the niggers said jimmy a peg on the sideboard by god i am thirsty too few what's all this about, uh, what's all this about said jimmy mopping his bald head and helping himself from the whisky bottle screwwala is typing the notice said mr little well here's to it said jimmy handing over a tumbler half full of neat whisky to mr little reggie reggie will be here before lunch sunny boy warned the manager you had better keep steady your funeral replied jimmy you uh, you have got to render the accounts i don't need to keep the plant going it goes on on its own see that's the uh, that the coolies get the notice only after reggie has been said mr you know there are all kinds of fanatics among them no i have checked out the only fan- fanatic assured jimmy a fellow who has worked at the tatas and was getting a bit above himself at the instigation of the reds good worker you know but we can't have sedition going about oh i have received an application for his reinstatement from the all india trade in union federation this morning i was also going to ask you about him said little these bloody swines are spreading discontent fast i hope wonder why the government does not do something about it there are two factions in it now informed jimmy 
swirling his moustache. The old Indian Trade Union Federation, started by Omkar Nath, and the Red Flag Union, recently started by a fellow called Jackson from Manchester. They should all be put up against the wall and shot. The whole bloody lot of them burst out Mr. Little. The, the sharp hoot of a car outside the office put an end to Little's vituperation. V-I-T-U-P-E-R-A-T-I-O-N Vituperation. He rushed out. Jamie put the glasses away and lifting the, uh, lifting the chick on the floor, emerged into the veranda, steadying himself. Good morning, little, little. Good morning, Jimmy. Sir Reginald greeted as the liveried, uh, liveried English chauffeur opened the door and the middle-aged baronet came out, a small, round man with a weather-beaten face streaked with ruptured veins. End of page 224. Now page 225. Has the notice been posted and explained, Jimmy? No, sir. I am just going to announce it, replied the foreman, feeling the heat of the sun on his scalp as he stood hatless in the compound. I should ask your wife to put on a few more clothes, said Sir Reginald, looking towards the foreman's bungalow, where Mrs. Thomas stood in a dressing gown, excitedly watching the rare event of Sir Reginald's visits to the factory. Jimmy flushed red and glanced towards his bungalow, fumed with anger, and then looked up to Sir Reginald apologetically. Well then, little lisps, lisps Sir Reginald through his false teeth as he proceeded towards the office, where Lal, Lal Kaka raised the chick for the entry of the great man and the flies. Well, you see, the board of directors has uh, serious news about a threatening crisis at home and, uh, and in view of the company's interest, not only in this mill, but in the Calcutta jute mills and the Madras mines and, the, and to guard against any loss to the shareholders, we have had to take the de this unfortunate decision. I am awaiting a cable from home and see from Clive Street and from Clive Street to see how we stand. But if this, uh, this uh, awful crisis, you'll see, the auditors are checking the accounts, Sir Reginald interrupted little, and the registers are all away, but I think we are quite safe. The last month's orders have been fairly substantial, but outside competition is pressing. I am going to the Viceroy with the delegation recommending a high tariff on foreign goods, said uh, Sir Reginald. But the government is well aware of the, uh, of the position. Lord Wolverhampton is, in, is a fine diplomat and is the best Disraeli tradition, in the best Disraeli tradition, you know, and we have, uh, and we have a sound man at the helm of in Britain, in London. Britain must go through the Singapore arrangement and make the Indian Ocean safe for our uh, ships. But the trouble is that these uh, Indians are putting more and more, these uh, Indians are getting more and more restive and the so socialists at home, you know, it is very difficult. What with the Quakers and the Gandhis? Did you did you hear that the Stephen that the Stephenson Mills have been bought over by Jamshedji Gigi Boy Group? That makes the Indian interest in the cotton industry 75 percent to our 25 percent. It is in it is a bad uh, look lookout. It's a bad lookout. But he continued taking out his watch. It all depends on how well. I will be late for my in appointment. Did she, uh, send me the accounts, will you? Little, little, there's a good chap. There's a good chap. He turned and waited for the manager to lift his, lift the click, then lift the cheek, then shuffled away saying goodbye, goodbye, as if uh, a sudden fit of uh, absent-mindedness had made him Obliv uh, oblivious to everyone else around him. End of page number 225. Now page 200 and 
26. The countless the coolies were pay, uh, pouring into the compound from the sheds, and after having the uh, having the announcement about their short work, they gesticulated behind the Chintasimta's head. They saw the long black polished body of the Delma Delma Daimler uh, swerve around. They saw, but they rushed towards it. Uh, vaguely aware that the master of the mill was even being it was being driven away after pronouncing their doom, they should have they would have fallen at his feet with pointed hand giant hands if the car had not been had not slid away. They passed. They rushed on the. They uh, rushed at the Chimta Sahib and begged him with entreaties and prayers, not in his. Uh, not to declare the factory on short work. The Chimta Sahib abused and threatened to strike any nigger who came near him or touched him with his dirty hands. They prayed, they wept, they cried, they stretched their joined hands and prostrated themselves on the earth before him, for they believed somehow that he was the God, the Master who, who could have, he, who could have uh, saved them or destroyed them. Then the Chimta Sahib broke away to the safety of his bungalow. Nadir Khan dispersed the crowd. Munnu, who knew nothing about direction, uh, directors and shareholders and threatening cries, threatening cries, believed that it was Ratan's uh, dismissal that had been the cause of this uproar. He determined to go back, to, uh, go to the Chimta Sahib's bungalow, sell Delhi, but begged him to take him take Ratan back Ratan back. He darted into the go down of the factory at the back of the shed where he, the water tap pump stood. There was a vantage point as far as at the far end of the go down whence you could jump you could jump over the fence into the garden surrounding the Chintu Sahib, Chimta Sahib's hill. Bungalow. A risk a brisk run brought him beyond the pump and he looked back to see that he was not being followed or observed. No, Arif, uh, no, no. And ahead of him, the coast was clear. He put his left hand on the, on the sharp bamboo edge of the fence and jumped clean over the thorns of the rose trees to give the, uh, to that grew in the garden. He hesitated a little on the dusty pathway that led through the garden browsers uh, to the uh, veranda. Perhaps, uh, nay, because no one seemed to be empty at this zoo, no one seemed to be at the site of the bungalow, and he did not know how he could approach the Chimta Sahib. A vision of the foreman's hulking shape hovered over the ba ba uh, veranda, urged him on. His heart was thumping as he came up to the steps of the emerald a veranda and faced a main child whom he presumed to be the foreman's wife. Nellie Thomas, a dried up small woman with streaks of grey uh, gray mixed with her shock of brown hair, a fat face, a sharp face, bright with enthusiasm. Page number 227. Her Thin hands, her thin hands, killing a, knitting a jumper with austere impatience, start for her legs with her legs uh, spreading wide on the remainder, on the armanda, in def defiance of all Munnu's conceptions and of what's it. The boy stood afraid for a moment, then he raised his hand to his forehead and said, Salam, Salam, she whispered and turned to where Jimmy stood, helping himself to a peg, shrilled with alacrity. Oh, oh, pretty boy, you do look pretty. You are the worse off for drink, and we here is an, and here is an employee to see here. Jimmy Thomas veered around where he stood and flung the bottle of whiskey in his hand straight at Munnu, believing that the uh, coolie had come to stab him with the dagger to revenge himself and other employees uh, for the notice of police murder, shouted Nelly, shout, jumping from the chair. As the 
as the um, as uh, this gym, at this Jimmy completely lost his temper and went with uh, with fist upraised towards his wife. But she slipped out of slipped out and fell on a fuel on a thud with a thud. Bhool. But he slipped and fell with a thud with a thud, beating his fist on the floor. Nelly, who had taken up a teapot from the tray, threw it at Jimmy Jimmy in self defence. Munnu bolted. But Mr Little, hearing the shouts of people and murder, had uh, sushed up. Rushed up. What happened? Asked Mr. Little. What is the matter? Nelly uh, whisked, whisked dignily, uh, dingily, but electrically from where she stood, and with great presence of mind said, "It was like him. Like it was like he, this year, sir. I was sitting knitting, and who should who should come in? But I am glad, of course, he was the worst for the drink." He says to me, he says, I ought to you see more, uh, see you. I ought to have some more clothes on, damned sauce. And that then he goes to the bottle, and a boy comes to to see him. One of them employees, I think. He loses uh, his temper and throws the bottle at him. He might have killed the poor nigger. And I bolted, uh, and I hollered out, "Police and murder!" Yet we were far from the fray, uh, from the. Uh, he went to list me, and slipped and fell. Mister Little lifted his eyebrows, and Nelly, who were who had paused to draw breath, continued uh, with the next chapter of what he, what her uh, narrative was. I always uh, told him. Not to kick anyone when they they are down. The boy wasn't hurt, and I am quite re- willing to represent by bygones by bygones. The bland courtesy was still on Mr. Little's face, but it was mingled now with the first first finest frown of dubiousness. He stood looking at them, the, like a small, and uh, with like a small puzzled. Uh, question mark. It was uh, uh, I hit in in self defence. I hit him in self defence, sir. Nelly confessed. Me life isn't safe. End of page two hundred and twenty seven. Now page two hundred and twenty eight. With him, I can't bear it. I shall leave him. And he she began weeping with the most beautiful and most heart rending sobs. Page number two hundred and twenty-eight. The coolies of Sir uh, Sir George White Factory kept crept like ghosts through the wasteland of the mills that afternoon. They were dazed by the sudden shock of the announcement, which deprived them of the only privilege left them—the privilege of work. A privilege indeed, because it meant wages, whereas its withdrawal would mean starvation. They were willing to work. They were only too willing to haul and clean the cotton in the godowns, to tend the machines and sweep the lint along the floor, to help to turn the cotton thread into cloth. They were willing to do anything so long as they could have their regular pay, even with the little cut for damaged cloth and for the foreman's commission and the interest of debts. So long as uh, as they could have enough to pay the landlord and to buy rice and lentils for the month, but to be told to go on short work, they seemed to have died all of a sudden. That little spark of life which made them move about willingly had died, and left them a queer race of men, dried up, shriveled, flat-footed, hollow-chested, hollow-cheeked, hollow-eyed. Their wretchedness had passed beyond the confines of suffering and left them careless and resigned. I went to see the Chimta Sahib about getting your job back," said Munnu to Ratan. But he was very angry. He threw a bottle at me. He must be very angry with you that he has passed the order about work for all of us. It isn't his anger with me, you idiot, but the big Sahib's greed. 
that is that is responsible for the order said ratan you come with me to the meeting and you will understand the police from all the factories are coming and the trade union is going to declare a strike it isn't his anger with me you idiot but the big sahib's greed that is responsible for the order said ratan you come with me to the meeting and you will understand the coolies from all the factories are coming and the trade union is going to declare a strike oh munnu exclaimed then i blamed the chimta sahib for nothing no not for nothing shouted ratan wildly he is a scoundrel i will break his head you wait and see and i will break the head of the bara sahib who comes in his motor car and cuts your pay hari walked bent back and bandy legged behind them the blind rage in his heart catching fire from ratan's blasting tongue but smothered by the weight of misery that oppressed him the other coolies followed grim and tense like hari treading the earth with their feet and occasionally shaking their heads to greet each other and spreading out their hands in vague gestures of despair end of page number 228 now page number 229 the sun cast angry glances at the chimneys of the mills as the huge crowd gathered in the desolate ground outside the bungalow which served as the headquarters of the all indian trade union federation the figures of the coolies were silhouetted against the earth as they waited for the speakers the babel of many tongues whispering half in fear half in expectation rose in waves the loud whispering half in uh, word the loud whispering the loud words of an official from the middle of the throng shrilled aloft as a kite or a crow flying in zigzag curve across the sky a phrase like down with wage cuts soared in the shimmering air and poised itself like a songbird above the horizon the fluctuating voice of the myriads of men becoming the one pointed symbol of their poverty and wretchedness a pregnant cry reverberating with the pain of all these dwellers of the slums the feeble newborn babes the naked and the sores the naked children with distended stomachs the youths disfigured by smallpox and sores and hookworm the men who were old without ever having been young the women whose bellies were always protuber- uh, protuberant with the weight of the unborn the aged who hobbled about slobbering down the sides of their mouths and stinking so they were the butts for the jokes of their own smelly sons and sons sons down down with the union jack up up with the red flag cries the rose and still the world whole crowd for a moment as the electric shock of a cricket uh, of a cricket suddenly quietens the teeming vegetation of the tropical earth in the evening the hatred and revenge latent in the slogan stirred the chords of their being their beings till their faces flushed and gleamed of wild hot fire shot from their eyes and hovered on their lips this is an evil age said a, said a wizened old workman fetching the words from somewhere in the depths of his chep, chest indeed said a middle aged man how can we live in such times by protesting against the wage cuts said a youngster i said the old man the youths of today have no respect for anybody grandfather returned the youth i join my hands to you every morning do i not but i do not prostrate by myself before the bada sahib in the motor car he rides in comfort and i have to walk all the on the dusty road under the sun and then he declares the factory on short work yes he is a bad master indeed agreed the middle aged man end of page number 229 now page number 230 my children have no shoes the little girl hurt her foot on a bit of glass the other day and the doctor says her foot must be cut off these englishmen think a mere pittance can keep us while they walk uh, they talk git mit git mit 
with their lendies says the uh, said the youth half mockingly then became earnest and claimed but we are members of the union what is the union going to do about it the cry was taken up what is the union going to do about it the more enthusiastic members of the congregation shouted quiet said ratan standing up omkar nath president of the union is going to speak to us then sauda sahib mr muzaffar and jackson sahib of the red flag union the president the president come on president his face flushed with dramatic flourish with which he ended up come on president munnu shouted taking the cue from his hero come on president the cry was taken up by other members of the throng lala omkar nath a prim well groomed man dressed in a home spun silk tunic and silk dhoti came up to the dais he was about 40 but his hair was graying prematurely and his eyes and brow wrinkled darkly under the edges of the expensive tortoise shell glasses his lower lip was twisted into a sardonic contempt of everything but himself and gave his cheek his whole we is like clean shaven face a curious conceited look which uh, adequately expressed what he happened uh, what had happened to him since his oxford days he had sought glory for himself through the adoption of a socialist program thinking that either gandhi or the government would buy him off in recognition of his balanced uh, balanced policy of compromise but he had missed the bus now he had plunged into the lap of ancient and honorable mother india and gone back to the modern moder- modernity he had cultivated in england though he said he said he tried to mingle the mes- message of the east and the west by relating the old indian ideas of labor and capital brothers he said with a dignity that fell flat What about uh, what about declaring a strike president said Ratan who was not very far from the dais is he the person who wouldn't see me uh, see you the other day when you were discharged asked munnu pulling uh, pulling at ratan's tunic yes said ratan brushing munnu's hand away lightly well president what is the talk ratan brother sit down said muzaffar citing uh, rising from behind the dais listen all listen to the president end of page 230 now page 231 acha said ratan and sat down brothers began omkar nath again in all ages labor skilled and unskilled skilled and unskilled organized or unorganized has been a necessary agent for the production of wealth in ancient india the part played by the labor in natural uh, in a national economy and the problems arising out of the labor in national economy and the problems arising out of the relationship between employer and employee employed were recognized and one finds wisdom in the old saying for the laborer a discerning my master is rare as for the employer is a faithful intelligent and truthful servant Mr Radha Kumud Mukherjee what is the union going to do about the wage cut asked Ratan whose uh, grievance against the insult he had suffered from the president made him extremely impatient only a bad master would indulge in unreasonably overworking his men raising their hopes without fulfilling them withholding their wages or keeping them in a in arrears Consider, uh, continued the president in the academic manner of his forefathers only a bad workman would ask for wages in the course of his work and it is only a bad master who will not pay his laborer wages during the work done uh, due to the for the work done bad workman ratan murmured what about the strike someone shouted what is the union going to do about the strike the president screwed up his sardonic lip lip a little more contemptuously the all india trade union federation will enter the 
entered the, into negotiations with the proper authorities. He said, you did that at Jamshedpur with the Tatas last year and nothing came out of it, shouted Dathan, pushing, at, pushing his head high.